How did they get there? The next part of how did they get there? How much time did it take to get there? Now, Joe Gray case, this was not a big issue because they were in the crosswalk and they had a walk signal. It wasn't a big issue. But in many cases, how quickly did they get there determines how much time did the defendant have to do something about it. So how quickly did they get there can be a real battle issue. Here are some walking speed studies. Walking speed studies. Ranges of speeds at which people walk. The way you do one of these studies, you get yourself a stopwatch or, or an iPhone that has a stopwatch. You measure a distance and you watch people walk. You start the clock. After they finish walking the distance, you stop the clock. You divide feet by time and you have data. But here's, here's what you have to keep in mind. The 10th percentile number is 4.8 feet per second. That means 10% of the population was slower than 4.8. The 90th percentile number is 6.5. That means 10% of the population is faster than 6.5 feet per second. So prosecutors, when studies are reported, they typically are reported by three numbers a low percentile, a high percentile, and either a median or an average. But the low percentile and the high percentile don't include everybody. There are people faster than the fastest, slower than the slowest. So be careful when you're examining an expert who uses statistical data that they have uh, slush room. They have 10% of the population below the number that you know, 4.8, they have 10% of the population above the number that you know, 6.5. They have 20% of the population outside the range of numbers that you think are the range of numbers. And that makes, that makes an expert very dangerous. 10% of the population is down here. 10% of the population is up here. 20% of the population is outside the published range. So be careful. You usually can't cross-examine these people based on a statistical inference. You have to base it on a common sense inference. The defense expert opines that this was unavoidable. So let's say you get this defense expert's report. This is a clip right out of a report. You are going to have to talk to your reconstructionist about it. I'm the reconstructionist. All you have to do is ask me anything you want. Okay, let me take a moment to just sort of summarize what the expert is saying. The expert starts out by saying that based on the tire mark evidence, 71 feet of skid marks, that the defendant's vehicle is traveling 40 miles an hour. There's really not a lot of quarrel with that right now because that's the information that's given. And as we'll see later this afternoon, if we put those numbers into this first equation, we'll get a speed of 40 miles an hour. He then says, using a generally accepted speed of 8 feet per second, in order to walk 11 feet, it takes 1.37 seconds. And his mathematics is correct. So he says, for the pedestrian to get from the starting point to where the collision is, takes 1.37 seconds. Pardon? Well, let me, let me finish the, the whole scenario, okay? But I mean, you're right, you're, you're right. He then says, in that 1.37 seconds, the defendant was back here. So 1.37 seconds before the collision, the pedestrian started walking, and the car was back here, and he calculates, using 40 miles an hour and 1.37 seconds, that the defendant's car was 80.5 feet back from the pedestrian when the pedestrian started walking. And then he goes on to show that you cannot avoid this collision if you're that close. What do you want to know? What do you want to know from me? What do you want to ask? What do you need to be clarified? Because right now, mathematically, this is exactly correct. Mathematically, it's correct. Yes? 
So one question is, did the speed of the car change significantly when it hit the victim? The answer to that would be no. And the explanation of that would be that when we consider the momentum of the car, its weight gives it so much momentum that when it moves the pedestrian, which is maybe 1 20th or 1 30th of its weight, the speed of the car does not change significantly. See, that's important because in order for us to say this 80.5 feet is accurate, we're assuming that the 40 miles an hour we got from the skid marks was also the 40 miles an hour before the impact. And that begs the question, did the car slow down when it hit the pedestrian? And the answer to that is no. Yes. Okay, that's a good question. What he's saying is, if the defendant is 80 and a half feet away, and it takes 82 feet to stop the car, his statement is, the defendant therefore could not stop before reaching the point of impact. That's all he said. He didn't say anything about how much injury would there be if he arrived there at a lower speed. He didn't say what are the consequences of braking earlier than he did. He just said, see, this was unavoidable because you can't stop before you get there. And that's a real black and white sort of opinion. So that's a good thing to consider. And that's all he said. And it is true. The numbers are true. Point of first possible perception. Could you really see the pedestrian when the pedestrian started to move? Could have been farther back. Yes, sir. Are there any stop signs that would have controlled traffic? Yes. Well, let's talk. What does variability mean to you? Wait a minute. I have to honor that question with. I just found this in a toy store, and because Joe always likes sounds, he said, you have to have sounds. So I have this sound. So whenever the question is like really the question on point, I'm going to introduce a sound to acknowledge that. Um, tell me about the variability of the speed. <laughs> the variability of the speed. He assumes a number of 8 feet per second as a walking speed for the pedestrian, and that's what you're questioning. OK. Huh. Boy. Let me show you what the numbers really look like. That's the key in this analysis, is picking the walking speed of the pedestrian. What does the defense attorney do? Does the defense attorney want the pedestrian to get there quick or slow? Quick. Because then his client won't have any chance to avoid. So the defense expert, if he is helping the defense, wants to pick a high speed for the pedestrian, because then the pedestrian gets there real quick. Uh-oh, Joe. Uh-oh. Left click. <laughs> Let me show you what the numbers look like for pedestrian walking speeds. And Maureen, I used your slides here of a pedestrian collision. And then the investigation of that collision just so that it would have a pedestrian. Maureen and I worked on this case together and we had a great outcome in New York City, in uh, Brooklyn. What questions would you ask your expert? Here is the results of five different pieces of published literature. The high value and the low value for walking speed in feet per second. Is eight in there any place? No. Eight is higher than any of these published studies at the high end. Eight is really a really fast walk. So what this expert did is found a piece of literature that had a very high walking speed in it. And I've been able to find speeds as high as 11.1 .1 for walking speed. And said, based on this, it's possible the pedestrian is walking at a speed of as much as. And therefore, at eight feet per second, here's what happens. The more realistic walking speed would be five or five and a half, or four and a half, or six. It would not be eight as a realistic speed for the pedestrian. This is a case, prosecutor, where an assumption has been made. Eight feet per second is an assumption. It should bother your common sense that any reconstructionist knows how fast that pedestrian was walking. Let's think about that now. 
Police get to the scene, there's a body on the ground, and there's a car. Ask a police officer, how fast was pedestrian walking? And see the look on their face. Because it's a question you cannot answer with any certainty. So you're saying variability. How can you attach a number? So maybe you attach a range of numbers to that walking motion. What this expert did was picked the fastest speed he or she could find and attached it to the walking motion because that got the pedestrian out there as quick as possible and made it as difficult as possible to avoid. So an expert uses one of these studies and he uses a walking speed of eight. You have your literature, you say, well, he said in his disclosure that he relied on Hermann's. I know Hermann's says 4.8 to 6.5. I'll just cross-examine this sucker. I'll get him to admit that eight isn't in the Hermann study. Well, you better have the Hermann study and you better have all the raw data because the eight might be one of those 93rd, 94th, 97th percentile numbers. And he just very casually goes, oh yeah, that's in the study. And there you go, your argument is done because you thought you had a factoid going here but he says, no, the, the number I used is in the other 10%. It is in the study, and now you're sort of disarmed. Most times when people testify about this kind of stuff, you cannot attack them with statistical logic. They have numbers available to them. You have to attack them with a common sense logic. A common sense logic is, sir, would you demonstrate for the jury what eight feet per second looks like when you walk? Well, I don't know how I'd do that. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to mark on the floor of the courtroom 24 feet with a piece of tape. I'd like you to just walk, and I'm going to have a stopwatch and start it and stop it. And he does this. And this is about four feet per second. And you stop the watch, and you say, I'm sorry, sir, but you're going to have to go a lot faster than that. That was only four feet per second. So he goes a little faster and that's about five feet per second. You say, uh, sir, based on my calculation here, that's only five feet per second. You have to go a little faster than that. Now, this is a very difficult demonstration to do for a number of reasons. Who controls the clock? You never hand it to the expert to control the clock because the expert will do this. Start, stop, and he'll get two seconds to have walked four seconds and he'll double his speed, just like that. So this, sir, you have to think this one out. This isn't a hand him the glove and put the glove on situation. <laughs> I mean, you really have to think, how are you going to, and, and I don't like to comment too much about it because in different courtrooms, judges will allow different things and blah, 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 blah. My naive, my naive would be hand one of the jurors the stopwatch, but you can't, you can't do that. But make sure that you control this demonstration somehow. Yeah? Are any of you from Pennsylvania? Any of you grown up in Pennsylvania as a kid? I grew up in Pennsylvania as a kid. And in the spring, we used to go up on the mountain, which was called the Mountain, up on the mountain, and we would eat green apples because the trees had these little green apples on. And about five to 10 minutes after you eat the apples, you get diarrhea. I mean, it's like, it's obvious <laughs> it's gonna happen. So here was the game. I mean, it's a small town. There's only like seven, <laughs> seven kids in the whole town. You eat the apples and everybody tries to run home. <laughs> and, then, and then the next day we tell anybody, did we have an accident on the way home? And it's like, ha, ah, yeah. Every day for like three weeks, that's what we do for at least an hour and a half. But anyway, I mean, it is. Here's what, here's what eight feet per second looks like when you're trying to get home <laughs> from, from eating the apples. It'll take me just a moment to get up to speed, but here's what it looks like. <laughs> like that. So be careful of statistics because the unknown numbers are the ones the defense expert has in their pocket. Here's a graph of five different pieces of research. Age across the bottom, vertically, speed in feet per second. You have a, you have a victim who's 35 years old. Any of those numbers are in play just from those five pieces of research. A good human factors expert has a library of research. You say to him, what would you say for a walking speed? Here's what typically an expert might say to the attorney. Well, what are you looking for? 
What are you looking for? Fast or slow? Because if it's slow, I've got a number down to half a foot per second. If it's fast, I've got one up to 11. That's a full run. That's a full-blown run. Because the literature has those numbers in it. And those numbers appear in walking studies. Because somebody acts differently than most. But the numbers are in the literature. So be careful of human factors testimony. We're going to talk about a little with regard to perception reaction time. Be careful of human factors testimony because the numbers can be all over the lot.